Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as the one who made creation from the beginning and then he will make it again. As for us human beings, we live on this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and all of us will die. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us back to life again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave us life and then he will cause us to die and then he will bring us to life again. And this is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can do this and nobody else has any share in this at all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself by saying, أَمَّنْ يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ He started the creation and he will repeat it again. وَمَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ And he is the one who provides for us from the skies and from the earth. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the same question again. أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ The repetition of this question is to get us to reflect. After mentioning all of these ni'mas and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continues to ask the same question again and again so that we can reflect. أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ Is there anyone worthy of worship besides Allah? قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ All of these ayat that we just mentioned, these ayat are proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the one worthy of worship and there is no partner with him. And these are facts that even the kuffar of the Quraysh would not dispute. They agreed with this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you believe that there is anyone worthy of worship besides Allah, bring your proof. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got his proof and he gave the proof from all of these ayat that we just mentioned. قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring your proof if you are truthful. And would they ever be able to bring any proof about this? They would never be able to bring proof that anyone is worthy of worship besides Allah. Never. And this shows the weakness of mankind. And that there is no power and no might except from Allah. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power, there is no might except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those that they associate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the partners that they put with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would not be able to even create a fly as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another ayah in Surah Al-Hajj. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا those that you associate, that you call upon besides Allah, they would never be able to even create a fly, even if they were all to gather together and try to do that. They would not be able to do it. And if a fly were to take something away from them and fly away, they would never be able to get it back. So this shows the weakness of the creation. This shows that the creation is not able to do anything and all power is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Regarding this ayah, the great muhaddith of this time, Shaykh Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani, rahimahullah, he mentioned a story. He was a great muhaddith and he wrote many books on hadith and class classification of hadith. He mentioned a story when he used to work as a watch repairman. And of course, the pieces of the watch, when you open the watch, they're very tiny, very small. So he was working on a watch one time and... Uh, fly came and it took one small piece of that watch and it flew away. And wh the watch, the way that it works is that every small piece of the watch, it has its own function. And once even a tiny piece is gone, the watch is rendered useless. You can't do anything with it. So a fly came and took one small piece of that watch and it flew away. So then Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, he reflected upon this ayah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا لَهِ وَإِنْ يَسْلُبُهُمُ الذُّبَابُ شَيْئًا لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُهُ مِنْ If a fly were to take something from them, they would never be able to retrieve it. So of course he was not able to re retrieve that, so he reflected on this ayah, and he realized that we are powerless, that the creation is powerless, and all might and all power is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. There are a couple of more ayats where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ, قل لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا الله. There is no one who knows anything from the ghayb, from the unseen matters, in the heavens or in the earth, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is certain knowledge that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then there are some types of knowledge that are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, but he shares some of this knowledge with the angels, and he shares some of this knowledge with the prophets. But then there is some type of knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not share with anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone keeps this knowledge. 
And these are the mafatih al ghayb These are the keys of the ghayb that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept with himself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in another ayah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ Five things. Five keys of the ghayb. Mafatih al ghayb that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows alone and he has not shared this knowledge with anyone. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ السَّاعَةِ The time of Yawm al-Qiyamah, the time of the sa'ah. When is it? This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for himself. He didn't tell it to the angels. He didn't tell it to the prophets. He didn't tell it to anyone. This is specific knowledge for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثِ And when he decides to give rain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives rain. And yes, the weather people may forecast, yes, there is a 90% chance of rain tomorrow, 50% chance of rain the next week. But none of this is ever 100% accurate. And you will see many times they predict rain and it never comes. And many times they predict a clear sunny day and it rains very hard. Because this knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone when he will give the rain. وَيُنَزِّلُ الْغَيْثِ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْأَرْحَامِ And he knows what is in the womb of a woman. He knows what is the situation of the baby inside the woman. And of course, these days you have, some, uh, you have some knowledge maybe with the ultrasound about, okay, is the baby going to be a boy or a girl after a few months? You can know a few things, but you will never have complete knowledge of what is in the womb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows this knowledge. What is going on inside there? What is the baby thinking? How does the baby feel? Nobody can know this. No doctor, no machine, nothing can ever give you the knowledge of this. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows alone. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى And a person does not know what he is going to earn tomorrow. You don't know what you are going to earn tomorrow. Of course you have your plans, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his plans and he is the best of planners. So we don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us to earn something very big in our future or we don't know if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written poverty for us in the future. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows alone and this knowledge of what we will earn tomorrow is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. But we constantly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His bounty and from His mercy to give us and to increase us in all goodness. And the last مفاتح الغيب, the fifth one وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ And the nafs, the person, the soul does not know in which land he is going to die. It could be that you live your whole life in one place and you never moved out of that place. Then you go for a vacation or you go for a business trip or maybe somebody comes for Hajj or Umrah and they're expecting after their work is done they're going to return to their country but they die in that place without ever having expected that and this is common this is something that we see all the time it happens because this is the knowledge that is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيِّ أَرْضٍ تَمُوتِ the soul does not know in which land he will die so these are five things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete knowledge of and these are from the مَفَاتِحُ الْغَيْبِ the keys of the unseen so قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ and the people do not know when they will be raised when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them up for يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ this is something we don't know but we have to prepare for this it, in the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, when Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and asked him some questions to teach the Sahaba about Islam, one of the questions that Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in front of the Sahaba, he asked him, "Qala fa akhbirni an sa'ah. Tell me about the sa'ah. Tell me about yawm al qiyamah." Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam replied him with a beautiful reply. He said, "Mal mas'ulu anha bi a'lama min al sa'il." The one who is being asked does not know better than the one who is asking. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ did not have any knowledge about when the hour would be, and Jibreel ﷺ also did not have any knowledge about when the hour would be. So this shows the Prophet ﷺ had no knowledge of this. Jibreel ﷺ had no knowledge of this. So of course you and me don't have any knowledge about this. But what is our job? Our job is not to try to find out when Yawm Al-Qiyamah is going to be. Our job is to prepare for Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Our job is to prepare for Yawm Al-Qiyamah and that is by doing good deeds and constantly asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for His mercy. The people are all the same in their knowledge of when Yawm Al-Qiyamah is going to be. All of our knowledge about Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when it's going to be, it's the same. And that is zero. We have no knowledge of it. You don't have any knowledge about it. I don't have any knowledge about it. Jibreel alayhi salam had no knowledge about it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had no knowledge about it. So our ilm regarding this 
when Yawm Al-Qiyamah is going to be is all the same. But the kuffar, بَلْ هُمْ فِي شَكِّمْ مِنْهَا As for the kuffar, they are in doubt of this. They don't believe in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. بَلْ هُمْ مِنْهَا عَمُونَ Rather, they are blind about this. And this is a disease. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us safe from this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to constantly remember him in all situations. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to never allow us to associate partners with him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to live and die as Muslims. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us up. And he is pleased with us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.